The first time I got exposed to AI was uh, during my undergrad studies. I got immediately fascinated by the mathematics of it. Having the ability to build a system that can learn by itself. You know, in many ways, is that dream of what could be. As a technologist, I'm totally obsessed with self-driving. I want to dedicate my life to really solve this problem. I want to be able to change the way that people are moving from point A to point B. I want to provide transportation for everybody. I want to solve the supply chain. People will say, you know, that's a moonshot, that's, it's not going to happen, or oh, you're a woman, you can't do that. You know, it's been oh, 25 years of just continuous showing the world that no matter what you think, think again. So if you look at how humans learn, typically they do it by interacting with the world. They see the consequences of their actions and based on that, they decide whether they, what they have done is actually good or not and then fine tune their actions so that it's better. You can see a child when he's learning a skill. And humans are very, very good at being able to generalize from very few interactions in terms of how they can do many more things. And that traditionally has been difficult for machines. Now, thanks to generative AI technology and thanks to the simulator we are building, we are actually really empowering machines to have that ability to learn like humans by interacting with the world in a way that is safe. If you're gonna go from a traditional robotics-centric approach to an AI-centric uh, approach, you need very different DNA in the company. And that's why building a new company was the way to go. I decided to start Wabi because you know, it became clear to me that the industry had consolidated to an approach that I don't think is going to get us there. And it also became clear that AI was going to be that technology, and in particular generative AI, that was going to really disrupt a uh, cell driving field. So the traditional stack is composed of many, many different models that have been hand-engineered uh, by humans in order to hard-code what the system should be thinking about. You basically tune mostly by hand the entire system, so that's overly complicated. It doesn't generalize to all the situations that happen on the road, and it's extremely hard to develop. Um, so Wabi is going to do things differently. We're going to just go away from this paradigm by instead uh, empowering a generative AI model to learn uh, from the unsupervised world. This means that there is no human intervention. You don't need to look and tell the system, oh, you should reason about vehicles, you should reason about pedestrians and all these things. Instead, you're gonna say, if you were driving in the world, this is how you will observe the world and then learn from this about which actions are good to perform, which is a very, very different uh, paradigm. Now, when you go into deploying satellite technology, there is many use cases that you can do. I think there is an amazing opportunity in logistics, you know, tracking in particular. Supply chain is at the core of everything. It's very obvious that it's at the backbone of the economy. And automation is the only path forward in order to solve the driver shortage. So that's why we're very focused on tracking. And once we have this technology deployed on this use case, then we will branch out to other things, but focus, 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 and go straight to your goal is what defines Wabi. So I've been working on self-driving trucks since 2016. And the way that we approached it in 2016 was, we will build a truck, we will make it autonomous as quickly as possible, and we will take it on the road, and we'll try and see what happens. Maybe there'll be a problem, and we'll take it back, we'll try again, and we try again, and we try again. And we basically use the real world as our primary proving ground for the technology. And the problem with this is that you can spend a lot of time driving up and down roads without learning anything new. You know, at Wabi, we're taking a different approach, and that's us driving in a simulated world more often than we're doing it in the real world. So I think one of the coolest things we have at Wabi is Wabi World, which is our simulator. And it's really an immersive clone of the real world. Everything is reactive. The other actors, if you slow down, they'll slow down around you or they'll change lanes around you. 
And that really gives you that exercise. It's like going to the gym and getting all like the real world training that you could need. Wabi World is really like a driving school for the autonomy stack or the brain of our trucks. And because the simulator is the same as reality, we can actually train the brain without safety issues, etc. And then the technology that we deploy in the real world, which is this brain, uh, is super performant from day one. And that's a very different approach from anything that we've seen in the industry, where you typically build a prototype, you discover your issues, you try to fix them, and then you iterate. A year ago, we did not own trucks. We did not have hardware built. Do you think that this has been fast? I think it's only going to get faster and more impressive as we go on. This has been a tremendous advantage for Wabi, and we can do things so much faster than the rest of the industry and really build technology that is scales, which is the important thing. It's not about who will be the first to market in a small lane, it's who can generate technology that can really expand uh, to all the different geographies that we need in order to empower uh, the movement of freight uh, in North America and beyond. So today we are really stress testing every single subsystem and system of uh, Wabi Driver. And, you know, it's a great environment in a close course. Uh, to be able to do, you know, safety critical testing, something that you obviously cannot do on public roads. And today is just, you know, the first step towards our journey of being in the physical world. Uh, you know, from here there is no limits for Wabi. We had such a, you know, ambitious, I would say, roadmap. Uh, you know, when we started the company, and it's incredible to see that indeed it was possible. Something that. If we have told anybody, uh, they would have said, you know, it's crazy what you're trying to do. Uh, but we proved them wrong. We proved them that actually, if you build the right technology in the right place, um, you can actually do it. This testing that we're doing here is really important for us because for the very first time, we're bringing everything together, hardware and software, in a real environment. This is the first time we're getting to put our technology on the road in any capacity. We tried doing lane changes, uh, braking for vehicles in front of us. Here we can actually test those things out in a safe environment. But the more important aspect is that we can validate some of the assumptions we made in the simulation. We have this track that we're in in Phoenix in our simulator, and we can run tests in our simulated environment. So what we're doing now is we're, we're validating the simulator. But the core principle of Wabi is to test in a virtual world. We still have to validate the virtual world is like a real world. And how do you know? You come out to a place like this and see. This is a very important moment for us. And it's been amazing to see that everything that we saw in the simulator, we see the same behavior on the test track on the real world. And that's you know, a very exciting moment for us. And it's a validation really of the approach that we took, which is really totally inverting what everybody is doing in the industry. Showing now the uh, virtual driver is ready to go on the road. For the first time, actually being out there and having the driver drive the vehicle is a major milestone. This is our first time to prove to ourselves that the system is safe enough before we go test in the real world. We feel like the thesis of the company is being validated here. All right, large vehicle on our left, breaking for downhill. All right, engaging, and one, two, three, engage. It is engaged. As you can see, it's a very smooth interaction between human and machine. And you can really see that we, we transition from human driving to, to machine driving. So as you see, it's actually uh, looking, perceiving, understanding, you know, there's pretty heavy traffic today on the highway and very safely is incorporating, uh, you know, getting to the speed that they should drive. 
and then starting his journey in the highway. So this is a very exciting moment for Wabi because you know, we have entered the next phase of the company, which is uh, our commercial phase, uh, where today we are uh, continuously moving freight for some of the largest shippers in North America uh, in the Texas Triangle. We have opened our first terminal, which is best in class in the industry. And this is just the beginning of uh, our expansion, which is going to be very, very fast across the entire country. Texas is really the heart of the trucking industry, logistics in the U.S. Everything goes through Texas. And for us, it's a great testing ground. It takes all the learnings that we've had in our simulator and on the track and bringing it into the real world. This is the major leagues. This is, the, this is proving to not just you, but also your customers, to the public, to the state, the regulators, everybody that you are a responsible company developing good technology. The moment that you, you are on the trucks and it starts driving, you really trust the system. Uh, it feels very, very human-like, it feels very natural. You actually forget that this is a driving truck. Every day you go on the road, you're going to see something new, something different, and to see a system just naturally handle that, it's amazing. The smoothness of the ride, the intelligence of the vehicle, the ability to understand the environment around it is pretty astounding. This is the first application in the physical world of generative AI. We haven't seen this power in any other approach of 20 years plus of, of this field. This technology is ready and is ready now. Are we taking the exit 272? Okay. So what you can see is the self-driving truck now exiting the highway autonomously. Uh, so it's slowing down to do this in a very uh, safe manner. And it's just very nicely just taking the exit and starting to drive on just the front edge road. But this is really, you know, for the first time, an AI system that can truly generalize to the unknown. And that's why we are so confident that not only we can launch very, very soon driverless, but also we can expand so fast geographically and, and really you know, provide a solution for our customers that uh, commercially uh, really makes sense and where they can actually you know, offload you know, all their freight to a self-driving solution. I think the next few years are going to be really exciting as far as taking the generative AI that we're seeing explode in the digital world and seeing it in the physical world. This to me is one chapter of a hundred and I think the company will grow and it will expand, all founded on this idea of using AI and bringing that to the real world. This is our first product, but there is so much more to come. As a founder and as somebody that has been obsessed with driving over the last 15 years, you know, it's like a dream come true that finally you know, is here.